Hey guys, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria and welcome to another video. Today is a good one. I'm going to be talking some science, specifically biochemistry, and in order to understand this whole carbs equal higher metabolic rate when you eat a sufficient amount of them every day. More specifically, why fat burns in the flame of carbohydrates. So this is a phrase that's been um, thrown out there a few times for many uh, doctors and YouTubers. And it's, it's a very simple phrase, you know, fat burns in the flame of carbohydrates. But to understand that really helps you to grasp on to the science and understanding of why it's so important to eat a high carb, low fat diet if health and a lean body are your long term goals. So let's get into it. First, I want to show, talk about the Krebs cycle again. Now, this is as a metabolic pathway that's within our mitochondria responsible for generating ATP or energy. It is fueled by glucose primarily that gets broken down into pyruvate that gets further broken down into acetyl-CoA and goes through the cycle in order to produce ATP. We've also talked about in previous videos that glucose acts as an antioxidant and it's primarily through this pathway as well as through the pentose phosphate pathway as well. Now, in order to understand how fat burns in the flame of carbohydrates, I'm going to give a explanation of this using some <laughs> uh, biochemistry terms. Now, when you're in a fed state, meaning there's sufficient amount of carbohydrates in the diet, the body uses carbohydrates in order to generate ATP ultimately, which is energy. In a fasted state, we, where we run out of carbohydrate, where we uh, use up all of our stored carbohydrate, which is known as glycogen, in our muscles and in our liver, we start resorting to fat to convert to ATP. Now, it's important to understand that these two chemical processes are very different. When we are in a fasted state and converting fat to fuel, it slows down our cellular machinery. And it does so to preserve our energy within our body because the body's saying, hey, we don't have enough food. Now, the interesting thing about this pathway is that I talked about this um, compound known as pyruvate, which is the broken down version of glucose. Now this can still be generated, but the problem is that it builds up outside of the cell when there isn't enough carbohydrate. And what happens from there is uh, the pyruvate gets broken down to ketones and it goes through a different pathway to generate energy from the ketones. You don't want to be in ketosis for an extended period of time because there are negative consequences associated with being in ketosis. Acute dehydration is one of them kidney and liver problems. Um, actually, we use our internal water stores to dilute these ketone bodies and excrete them out of the system, which is why the ketosis diet creates this water weight loss on the scales. It is a <laughs> effort of the body to um, dilute the toxicity. So when we are in a fed state, the body can just easily turn carbohydrates, break them down to glucose, turn the glucose to pyruvate, to acetyl-CoA, and run it through this Krebs cycle. Specifically, it uses what's known as oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate combines with acetyl-CoA to form citrate, initiating the Krebs cycle to generate ATP. Now, in a fasted state, 
we don't have the ability to regenerate this oxaloacetate. So we get this buildup of pyruvate in the system because it can't go through the mitochondria the right way and it goes into the ketosis pathway. Ultimately, fat burns in the flame of carbohydrates because in order to burn fatty acids, you have to have enough carbohydrate to fuel the Krebs cycle. So when we are talking about fat loss here, in a fed state, we are burning a 50-50 ratio of carbs to fat. So when your diet is low in fat, you're forced to use your body fat stores for the fat that gets burned. So when you're going about your day and you're burning energy because we burn energy to stay alive, well, we have to generate energy to stay alive, burning it from either carbs or fat and protein in some rare cases, we, again, are in a fed state. We're burning the 50-50 ratio of carbs to fat and the fat that gets broken down through beta oxidation can go through the Krebs cycle. When we are in a fasted state and we don't have enough carbohydrate available, that the fat that gets broken down ends up broken down to ketones, it doesn't go through the Krebs cycle. So that generates a lower, that creates a lower metabolic rate. When we're in the fed state and there's enough carbohydrates present to run that fat through the Krebs cycle, we keep our metabolism high while burning fat. So I hope that makes sense. Something else that I wanted to discuss uh, was a really cool study that I came across that uh, found, at, that tested whether you burn more calories in a fed state uh, during exercise or in a fasted state during exercise. And I'll show you guys the results. So in, a, in the fed state, the people burned more calories overall than in the fasted state. This is before exercise. So fed before exercise or fasted before exercise. And the fed people burn more calories. They burn more calories in a 12 hour period. They could burn more calories in a 24 hour period. And why is that? Because when you eat, your metabolism stays high. You are more efficiently burning or creating, I'll call it creating, creating energy that can be used for activity. So hope this all makes sense. I don't want this video to get too long, so I'm gonna end it here. Let me know if you have any comments or questions down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.